Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Welcome to morning showers this wonderful Saturday morning. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence at your feet, learning of you daily. Thank you for this wonderful time. We ask you, know, God, that you teach us your word afresh this morning. Pray, Lord, that you unstop our ears. Pray, Lord, that you open our eyes. I ask, oh God, that your word will capture us with power in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. For in Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome once again to this wonderful edition, the sixth day of the month of July, the second half of the year has begun already. Glory be to God. There's a song that just comes to my mind now. You know, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They run new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. The steadfast love of the Lord does not cease. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Hallelujah. New every morning. And this morning, I will be sharing with us what I titled the four dimensions of God's love. We're going to be looking at the four dimensions of God's love. We know there are different kinds of love. We're talking about the Four dimensions of agape love, God's kind of love. Hallelujah. I'll take our test this morning from the book of 1 John chapter number 3. 1 John chapter 3, I'll read from verse 1 to verse 3. Powerful scripture. Hallelujah. Verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. And the translation says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because they did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Verse 3 says, And everyone who has this hope in himself, everyone, and everyone who has this hope in him, purifies himself just as he is pure. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says, Behold, what man, what kind of love is this that the Father as lavished on us. Behold, what manner, what nature, what kind of love is this that the Father has shown unto us? And that is the love we are looking at today, the agape, the fourth dimension of God's love. Hallelujah. I want you to know first and foremost that God is love. And he who loves is of God. That's what the scripture says. God is love. God is love personified. Whatever God does, whatever he says, is born out of a heart of love because his nature is love. God loves by nature. Hallelujah. It is his nature to love. Glory to God. And we're looking a little deeper into the different dimensions of this love. Hallelujah. It says, Behold, what manner of love 
The Father has lavished on us. He has lavished his love so much on us. And the number one dimension I want us to look at this morning is that God's love is unending. God's love does not come to an end. God's love is from eternity to eternity, from everlasting to everlasting. That is one dimension of the love of God that separates it from the love of the world. So when God loves, he loves completely. He loves unending. He loves from eternity to eternity. That is the kind of love that the Father has lavished on us. Let's look from the Old Testament as we drive to the New Testament to give a scriptural background on this unending love of God. God's love does not end. It does not run out of love. Hallelujah. God does not fall out of love with us. He loves and he loves us completely. Jeremiah chapter 31. Our first scripture of this, on this unending love is Jeremiah 31. Hallelujah. I, I will read from verse 3. Verse 3. The Bible says, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. This is the Lord speaking to you and I this morning. I want you to know that every word of the scripture is directed to each and every one of us. And hear what the Bible says. It says, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have loved you with an unending love. My love for you, says the Lord, is unending. It's from beginning to the end of times. Hallelujah. It's a certain everlasting and unending love that we can't exhaust it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, I have loved you. He's not thinking about loving us. He has loved us with an everlasting love. And because of his love, he has drawn us with loving kindness towards himself. Hallelujah. God's love is unending. God's love does not run dry. He is from eternity to eternity. And look at what he said. He said, and therefore I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Let's look at this scripture, Psalm 103, talking about the loving kindness of God. Hallelujah. Because God has loved us, he deals with us on his tender loving kindness. Psalm 103. Let's look at this scripture this morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in Psalm 103, from verse 4. It says, who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Hallelujah. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Because his love is unending. Because his love is from everlasting to everlasting. He has crowned us with his loving kindness and tender mercies. God deals with us gently. Hallelujah. God deals with us like newborn babes. The Bible says he has inscribed our name in the palm of his hands. Hallelujah. If I want translation says that he has, he has inscribed our picture in the palm of his hands. So morning, afternoon, evening, night, and day, our picture is always inscribed in the palm of his hand. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah 49. We have been inscribed. He has loved us with an everlasting, eternal love that cannot run dry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the one dimension of the love of God is that his love does not end. A man may propose 
eternal love for you. I love you from here, from moon, from here to moon back. How do they say it now? I love you to the moon and back. And somebody was calculating, is ah, the distance from the moon to the earth is not that much. So you love me for how many hours? But what they mean is the distance. But in terms of time, it's not that far. God does not just love us from the moon back. He loves us from all eternity. Glory to God. Amen. Any man can say to you that I love you from the moon back. I can love you from heaven and back. God does not love us from heaven and back. He loves us all eternity. Glory to God. Says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Look at the New Testament. Hallelujah. In the Bible book of John chapter 13. Talking about Jesus. You know, this song, you know, I was ministering somewhere, and this song kept coming. He loves me. I cannot say why. He loves me. Some of the things we've done in our lives should have made God to fall out of love for, with us. No, but he does not fall out of love. He loved you. Hallelujah. In John chapter 13, from verse 1. John 13, verse 1. The Bible says, speaking about Jesus, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who in the world, he loved them to the end. Hallelujah. Bible says, having loved his own that were in the world, he loved them to the end. Hallelujah. This is awesome. God does not just love you halfway. Hey, he does not take us on a love trip and, and abandons us before we get to our destination. Hallelujah. He loves us to the end, to the end of time, to the end of age. This songwriter says, and this grace will take us home. The love with which he has loved us we not diminish in quality or in quantity until we see him face to face. Until we see him face to face. Child of God, I want to encourage you this morning. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know your particular situation. But I want you to know on the basis of scripture. Now I often tell people, I don't care whatever anybody says. I don't care. Anybody's thinking, I don't care about anything. I don't care even about my own experience. As long as the Bible declares it, I go with the Bible. I don't care about my feelings. And I don't want you to care about your feelings. You may feel unloved at this moment. You may feel unlovable even at that. But I want you to know this morning that Jehovah God, and that's who that matters. That's all who that matters. It says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have loved Moses, having loved this one who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Hallelujah. That's the first dimension of God's love. Aren't you, aren't you exam? That God's love is inexhaustible, that he loves you from eternity to eternity. It's awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this unending love. Thank you because you love me so much. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, SS love, oh. Lord, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, so much, oh, SS love, oh. That is the love that God has for you. God bless the singer, message. He said, God loves us so much, so much. Excess love. His love is excess. Glory to God. The number two dimension of the love of God is that God's love is unconditional. God does not love us based on conditions. Hallelujah. God loves us regardless. God loves us unconditionally. You know, one of the evidence is that he loved us even from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. That is how great his love is. He loves us without 
condition. You know, a lot of times, you know, even in marriage these, these days, those days when it's talking about, you know, to death do your part, you know, you love you and all that. But now people are putting conditions to love. <laughs> you know, as long as I feel good, I love you. The day I don't feel good about you, I don't love you. God isn't like that. God loves us unconditionally. In our worst days, in our best days, God's love remains sacrosanct. God's love remains steadfast. God's love remains sure. He loves us unconditionally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to just remember something. You know, if a mother who is taking care of a toddler, you know, it's not only when the child is clean and all that, that the mother loves the child. Even when the child messes up, even when the child pulls, even when the child scatters anywhere, the mother's love, the parents' love is still constant. That is the kind of love God has for us. Glory to God. His love is unconditional. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Hallelujah. Verse 24. Jesus said, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory which you gave me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. This was God, Jesus, speaking to God. He loved us even the foundation of the world. Even before we were formed in our mother's womb. The psalmist says, your eyes saw our formed bodies. Why yet in our mother's womb? Right from there, he loved us unconditionally. In Romans 2 to 9, the story of Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau in Romans 2 to 9. Let's look at what the scripture says. All right, I'll read from the stand. The Bible says, and not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one man, even our father Isaac, for the children not yet born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to a lesson may stand not of walls, but of him who calls. It was said to her, the older shall serve the younger. As it is written, God says, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. Hallelujah. This is unconditional love. Even before Jacob did anything, before Jacob could end God's love, the Bible says, I have loved him. A lot of people have issues with this. I don't. Because God sees from the beginning to the end, and He has He has lavished His love on us unconditionally. Glory to God. Not based on anything you could do or you cannot do. Hallelujah. He said, Jacob, I have loved according to the bubbles of the last. Not of works, not based on conditions, not based on, based on rules. It's based on his love. He's the one who is called us. You know, some people say, why don't you balance this? Why? Don't, don't you think people will misuse God's love? The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. Hallelujah. He love, we love him because he first loved us. It is his love that has drawn us to himself. And he has shot, you know, the Bible says he has poured this love in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. We respond to his love by loving him. And the Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. Hallelujah. Because of the kind of love that he has loved us. Our response is in love towards him. Hallelujah. Jacob, I have loved Israel. And because of his love, we love him in return. Glory to God. And I do you show one of the things I wrote down in my note is that obedience is a very true test of love. Jesus said, if you love me, 
You will obey me. You will keep my commandment. Hallelujah. We don't take God's love for granted because it's unconditional. God's love, the Bible says, this love compels us, constrains us, and falls. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the love of God constrains us. The love of God fronts us. The love of God regulates us because we love him. Joseph said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? This is the response of our heart to the love that God has called in our heart. Glory to God. So God's love is unconditional. Glory to God. Amen. It's not going to love you more or love you less based on weather. In some places, it's winter. Some places, it's summer. Autumn or spring. Some places, it's morning. Some places, it's day or night. God has not left you based on the conditions of the weather or the time, the seasons of time. God's love is not conditioned. It's steadfast. Always constant. Hallelujah. Let me run now. This third one is God's love is unsearchable. God's love is unsearchable. The Bible makes us realize in Ephesians to the 3, Ephesians to the 3 from verse 19, the Bible says that we may know the love of Christ with passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. God's love is beyond the realm of human understanding. God's love is beyond the realm of human comprehension. There are three things, I have, as I began to study recently, that I discovered the Bible explicitly says are unsearchable. One of them is the love of Christ. The second one, the Bible talks about the unsearchable riches of Christ. And the third one is the unsearchable wisdom of God. Hallelujah. So the love of God is unsearchable. The width and the length of it is beyond our human grasp. It's beyond this brain. The depth and the height of it is beyond the tallest of man or the shortest of man. It's so deep we can't get under it. And it's so high, we can't get above it. That is the love of God. It's unsearchable. It's so great. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, that with the great love with which he has loved us, great is his love. Jesus said, greater love has no man than this, for a man to lay his life for his friend. Greater love has no man than this. There is nothing greater than the love of God. The love of God is greater than our human comprehension. It's unsearchable. Hallelujah. And you know the Bible says by the Spirit of God, it, it, you know, if you look at the scripture in Ephesians 3 that we're reading, it said that we may be able to comprehend with all the things. It requires the eyes of understanding to be enlightened, to be open for us to have a glimpse, a grabs of the width and the length and the depth and the height of the love of God, that we may experience this love. You know, I was saying somewhere, I said that it, for us to know peace beyond borders, we need to understand the width and the length and the depth and the height of God. When you are secured in the love of your Father, Peace attends to you. Hallelujah. Too many of us are dependent on people's approval. All right? I'm getting to that point in my life that all that matters right now is to understand the love of God that is beyond human understanding. His reach is beyond the realm of humans. It's unsearchable, the love of God. It will take the spirit of man to connect with that love. And when you find that love, you find peace. And not only that, when you grasp by the revelation of the spirit of God, this unsearchable love of God, the Bible says you will be filled 
with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Time is running. The, talk, the fourth one, the love of God, is that about the love of God is that the love of God is undeservable. That's the money showers for this morning. That's what we shared in our morning devotions this morning, money showers. The love of God is undeservable. Romans chapter 5, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, while we were yet in our sins and our mess, Christ died for us. That love is undeservable. And I made an analogy about the story of the prodigal son. The Bible says he had obtained his portion of inheritance from his father. And he proceeded on a, on a long journey to a very far country. And about there, he wasted his substance in riotous living. Soon he ran out of money. Soon he ran out of everything. He became naked, hopeless, homeless, and hungry. In the midst of it, he knew at that point in life that he didn't deserve the Father's love anymore. One of the Bible says he came to himself, his senses, and said to himself, I'm going back, even though I don't deserve his love, but I'm just going to take my chance. I'm going back to my father because his love is undeserving, because his love cannot be ain't. Even though I've been in a mess, I'm going to trust in the undeserving love of God. And the Bible says he took his journey. I made up his mind. Once I set my eyes on my father, I will say to him, Father, I have sinned before you and before heaven. I am not worthy. I do not deserve it. I'm not laying claim on anything. I know I've messed up. I've wasted opportunities. But I'm just asking. Just accept me as one of your servants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, as he was here far off, the Father, glory to God. The Bible says, the Father saw him from my son and gathered his garment. And ran as fast as he could towards his son. He hugged him and kissed him. As dirty and smelly as he was. Maybe I know how they bad for days. The father didn't care because his love cannot be aimed. His love was undeserving. He hugged him and said, Welcome home, son. And he told his servants around him, Hey, guys, this son of mine was dead, but he's alive. He was lost, but he's back. Go oh, give him a bath. Change his clothes. Put a ring in his finger. Put sandals on his feet. Today, we will celebrate. That is the undeserving love of God. And I wrote the morning showers this morning. Many of us are waiting to clean up before we come to him. God is not waiting for you to clean up. He's waiting for you. He's waiting to clean you up. The Bible says man's righteousness is like a field of before God. He's not waiting for you to clean up before he receives you. He's waiting to clean you up. That is the undeserving love of God. I want to thank God. I want us to thank God for these four dimensions of his love. His love is unending. Hallelujah. His love is unconditional. Hallelujah. His love is unsearchable. Hallelujah. His love is undeserving. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise for your love. We give you praise for your love this morning. We'll receive your love in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you grant according to the riches of your glory that will be strengthened by your spirit with might in our inner man, that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, that we be rooted and grounded in the love of God, that we may be able to comprehend with all the sins the width and the length and the depth and the height of the love of Christ in the name of Jesus. 
that we may understand and comprehend the love that surpasses all knowledge, that we may be filled with all the fullness of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Fill our hearts again with your love. That we will walk with this assurance that the Father loves me. That we can sing with assurance what manner of love the Father has given us to us. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given us to us. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given on to us. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given on to us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Father, we give you praise. Take all the glory now and forevermore. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning. We give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore.